speaking of, um, have you watched any of that uh, Medici historical drama that's like on Netflix? No, what's it called? I think it's just called Medici. <laughs> oh, I've, I've definitely meant to, to look at it because I took, um, the only history I took in college was art history and they come up a lot. Yes, they would. <laughs> they would absolutely would. <laughs> well, here's the thing about that one, um, just to go on a sidebar. It, it's, so they got Dustin Hoffman to play the patriarch of the family. Um, okay. But I, I tried to watch it. I just didn't, I couldn't get into it. Now, my I favorite... can't imagine him playing that, that sort of role. Yeah, it's, well, and the thing, I think through the series, it takes place actually after his death. And so, like, all oh, of his okay. involvement is, so like, like flashbacks, flashbacks to when okay. he was alive. That doesn't sound too bad. Um, but, I mean, here's the thing. My favorite historical drama series um, is uh, The Borgias. Not Borgia, yeah. the other show about the Borgia family that aired, like, exactly the same time. Really, really <laughs> weird. Um, but The Borgias, uh, in which... Why well, can't I think of the voice? The, the guy who played Scar in Lion King. Oh, 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 yeah. Um, Jeremy Irons. Yeah, yes. Uh, in which Jeremy Irons plays um, the patriarch of the Borgia family. Um, also, can we mark this historical moment when I was able to recall an actor's name? Like that, I, I am. And I wasn't. <laughs> I am so bad at actors' names. I always joke that I, I always forget Tom Cruise's name without <laughs> fail. That's good. Uh, but in this series, um, Jeremy Irons plays the patriarch of the Borgia family who um, eventually be becomes Pope. Um, it's a really great, twisted little show. Very fun. Very silly. Um, I love it a lot. And it got canceled very prematurely. It makes me cry. But Medici just kind of strikes me as them trying to do, do that show again. Yeah. Because it's like, okay, let's take this revered older character actor who's a little beyond his prime not necessarily getting any work anymore cast him as the enigmatic patriarch of this notorious italian family let's have some sexy kids yada 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 <laughs> like yeah. and, and it just it, was, it just felt like kind of like a cheap ripoff of yeah. a show that i really loved so that mm -hmm. might have something to do with why i just couldn't quite get into it but i mean and see Borgia is a great example. Uh, rather, the Borgias. Borgia sucks. Don't watch it. I don't like that one. <laughs> but the Borgias is a great example of that kind of like fun, sexy history where you know the details aren't necessarily important as far as you know what the show is really trying to do. Like it, there, are, you know, there are, it does throw in certain little historical bits, um, like forks. Uh, there's a great line where <laughs> someone is talking about Lucrezia Borgia, who is um, the daughter of the family and how hoity-toity she is. And someone, a uh, poor person, remarks, I'll bet she eats with a fork. And then it, it, it cuts to her eating and she's eating with a fork. And it's mm -hmm. it's a great little moment because, it, yeah, dr that's, that's a detail to sort of indicate to you just how hoity-toity and fancy the family really is. Yeah. Um, but then, you know, there's other stuff like uh, Cesare, her brother, he runs around in leather pants and it's like... I don't think Italian noblemen uh, at the beginning of the Renaissance were wearing leather pants, like black, <laughs> shiny leather pants. Like, but he looks good, so it's fine. <laughs> like, we get what we want. We know it's fine. He just he looks good, so. <laughs> There's another show that was also about them, I think. Yeah. Or maybe well, I'm confusing. Yeah. I think I'm confusing it with. Um, yeah, I'm confusing them with. Uh, Mary Queen of Scots, I think. Oh yeah. There's like a million versions of that too. One with that one guy. I don't remember his name. He's got a thin mustache though. <laughs> Again, here's here's my ailment of not being able to recall actors. Yeah, the only one I can think of about Mary Queen of Scots, and I'm sure there are a million of them, but there was that more recent one. Um, she's like a teeny bopper. Was it Rain? Oh yeah, that one's on. Um, that one's on. I want to say CW, but it might not be. I don't know. It's a teeny bopper show for teeny boppers. Their costumes crack me up because they are prom <laughs> dresses. Like, they're prom dresses. They are not. It's yeah. very, very funny. It's, you know, what if Mary Queen of Scots was a millennial? Like, oh that's my what goodness. that show is. They should have just gone the whole way and done that instead of, like, you know, trying. 
You know, they should just make. They're it. barely trying. Oh. Like, I think it's pretty blatant, everybody, that that's what that show is. <laughs> you let an angel in. Sherlock. Sherlock also, also, he's movie. never been blonde since this movie, so maybe that says something. Yeah, he, he's <laughs> separated himself from that persona. He, he just can't be blonde, otherwise it, it, there's like a creepiness level. Yeah, well, isn't that his natural hair color? I'm not sure. I don't. I know he doesn't naturally have dark hair. I'm pretty sure he I does have Tom, light hair. I think Tom Hiddleston is naturally blonde, but I don't. I get them so mixed up. Yeah. <laughs> fair. It's fair. <laughs> yeah, I'm pretty sure Tom Hiddleston does have light colored hair normally, uh, but I'm pretty sure Cumberbatch does too. I'm not sure. Not important. Who knows? <laughs> Leave us a comment on the on the YouTube video if you know. <laughs> if, you, if you know what their natural hair colors are, please, somebody help us. <laughs> I can imagine. I can imagine anybody that works at the Tower of London is just annoyed by every single tourist <laughs> because that that place has been just abused by historical fiction in films <laughs> yeah yeah it has like, even its name in my opinion is a is really not a great accurate name for w the building itself like it's not that tall so i, I don't imagine but I mean, it is a, a tower time. it's a castle that's a tower kind of <laughs> it's kind like of. three stories <laughs> no, it's not. It's much bigger than that. I've been there. <laughs> well, what I imagine it is, it's smaller. <laughs> well, it's pretty big. It's definitely a tower with a wall around it. But no, I mean, it's certainly not the big thing that everybody imagines it to be, especially, you know, people who aren't from there. Pe you know, Americans, yeah. they think about the Tower of London and I think some kind of sprawling, crazy well, dungeon. And it's like, no, it was just a small castle in London. Or, or, they, or they confuse it with Big Ben. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> one of those two. Which I mean, I, if I didn't know better, I probably would myself. You know? an angel Speaking of that spider, funny story. The guy who produced <laughs> that movie, he had a thing about wanting to put a giant spider in a movie. It's very clear that the only reason that giant spider is in that movie is because this producer wanted to put a giant spider in a movie previous to uh, working on wild wild west he was um producing a, an ill-fated superman movie never got made he tried to put a giant spider in that too <laughs> so he just wanted to put a giant spider in a movie that's why that thing exists he's i bet it hero. wasn't in the original script he's my hero <laughs> like like clearly it's just a guy being like yeah 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 do whatever you want make the movie but put a spider in it because that's my thing i want to be able to tell my friends like hey that giant spider that was me i came up with that like... can you imagine that being your like sole focus in life <laughs> like a giant spider that person has myself. so much determination <laughs> well he did He's it like, i better have to ruin the movie just let me at it. <laughs> yeah. Let an angel in. Yeah, and there's that just really uncomfortable bit with the with the Asian woman. Ugh, don't like that. I, yeah, there's just there's some weird <laughs> stuff, but it's a bit creepy. I don't know. There's, and and I I could I can't I might be misremembering this, but weren't a lot of cowboys historically black? There were definitely black cowboys. Um, mostly though, uh, they were Mexican. And I think really gay too. <laughs> Very possibly. I, I'm not super well, I mean, familiar I, with cowboy I've, history. I've, I've heard that. I've heard that. I don't know if that's a true fact or not, but I mean, <laughs> well, it would but certainly make though. sense for the situation they're living in. We gotta we gotta sort of be clear about our terminology here, though, because I mean, as much as we we sort of. We abuse the word cowboy in popular vernacular. Jim West isn't a cowboy. He's a gunslinger. Yes, that's true. He's, he's and, and and eventually part of the CIA, or is it CIA or FBI? One of the two. Neither makes sense. <laughs> <laughs> so I don't know. <laughs> Neither one is plausible in any way, but... <laughs> 
<laughs> well, again, the whole movie is just Im- implausible. I remember watching it for the first time, and I swear that that spider thing could have been real. Like, you could not have told me no. Wild Wild West is, a, is an interesting example of sort of historical fantasy. Um, I'd say I'd, I'd, I'd align it with, like, the Pirates movies. Oh, yeah, for sure. It's yeah. even, it's very similar. Like, the whole, I don't know. I can't think of a, the word for it, but like just the whole tone is very similar to the pirate movies. Yeah, that sort of fun, wacky adventure. Yeah, sort of with thing. Selma Hayek. Or no, yeah. Selma Hayek's not in not in pirates. That's um, um, uh, Selma Cruz or uh, not Selma Cruz. Uh, uh, Penelope Cruz. Penelope Cruz. Yeah, <laughs> we I just got mixed there. their names together. Yeah. <laughs> um. Yes, Penelope Cruz. Yeah. Do you know who directed Wild Wild West? I have the page open right now. Um, Barry Sonnenfeld? What else did he do? Let's find out, shall we? Adam's Family and Adam's Family Values. And the Men in Black movies. Okay, the Men in Black movies makes total sense. Yeah, sure, sure. (laughs) So I think Wild Wild West, he just sort of lost his way. (laughs) I mean, I would personally say... It fits his aesthetic. Sure, it fits his aesthetic, but it's just not really up to standard. Yeah. <laughs> it's, it's, like, with, well, I mean, are all the Men in Black movies gold? No. <laughs> the first one is though. Wild Wild West couldn't even attain that with one movie. Both, <laughs> both Adams Family movies are absolute gold. Nothing wrong are. with them. They're perfect. Yes. Um, never insult them in my presence. <laughs> They're perfect. Movies. He also did uh, Get Shorty, which I've actually never seen. I've heard good things, though. Yeah, it's critically acclaimed, so... Um, so he's also he just... a cinematographer for the Coen brothers. Oh, well, they have good so cinematography. He what he's doing. Yeah, yeah, clearly he, he does. Doing. Wild Wild West just sort of happened. <laughs> I mean, I will say, I think every Men in Black movie is better than Wild Wild West. <laughs> <laughs> um, as much as I enjoy that movie, all the I Men in Black probably, movies are better than... I didn't absolutely love the third one. I would probably say the third one is below Wild Wild West, but the first and second are definitely miles above. Yeah. We can agree Although on the second that. one's kind of weird too, but I like the second one. The second one has a lot of heart, I feel like. It's a functional movie is what it is. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Whereas Wild Wild West is definitely not a functional movie. No, it isn't. An angel. Um, it also says it was written by these uh, two people, S.S. Wilson and Brent Maddock, whose previous collaborations include Short Circuit and Tremors. Oh, okay. So, literally everything about this movie makes total sense. It's just, the sp- I don't know, something something fell apart. Weird convergence of things. Although, although, I would say Tremors is definitely a cult classic and not necessarily a good movie. Yeah. I'd say the Even same though it's circuit. one of my favorite of all times, <laughs> I absolutely love. I love every Tremors movie. Well, maybe not the newer one. <laughs> the first three. <laughs> you let an angel in. Yeah, but I think I think big a big part of why it's not doing well is because nobody cares about Charlie Hunnam. <laughs> like he doesn't have the star power. For that movie like he's not a draw yeah and then what's his face is the villain instead of the main jude know. law just... jude yeah. law has definitely lost his luster um yeah. i think what he needs to do is there's a, there's such a fine line for like aging male actors in hollywood like you have to either get the gritty roles or i don't know find some other thing well you could just take the johnny depp route and just flush your career down the toilet in a very spectacular fashion he's like i'm gonna join a band well he's like i'm gonna make all these terrible movies for my kids to watch that's really what he did although i do love i do love rango i love that movie so much what a weird movie like who who was that for except for me like right who and then it's just like Clint Eastwood, but not actually Clint, Clint it's Eastwood. It's way it's too Timothy mature and Oliphant. dark for kids. Like it's not a family movie. What is that movie? I think I think what what happened with that movie is they were trying to do the whole like, oh, it's a kids movie, but it's gonna have jokes for adults. But they went too far. Way with that. too far. Like kids are not. And they're I, gonna be upset I, by that movie. 
and I don't, I don't think they did a good job with like the taste level for like a majority of adults, but definitely the taste level for like weird adults. <laughs> yeah, it's just a weird, weird movie. I, it's fascinating. I need to go watch that again. I love that movie so much. <laughs> yeah, I haven't seen it in a while, but it's, it's got good. like Abigail Breslin as like as like a as like a a possum or something like that. I don't oh. even remember. I just remember Bill Nye was the snake. Oh yeah. Well, I, okay. That that casting in that movie is so good. <laughs> it is. What a crazy movie though. Like with like Fear and Loathing in Las Vegas references and right. like. And then, and then also like uh, Clint Eastwood stuff and like Western. I was just amazing. A bunch of stuff kids are not gonna get, and not in like a oh, oh haha, they just won't get it kind of way. Like in a like they're gonna be confused. Right. Kind of they're gonna, like they're gonna watch this in fifteen years and be like, holy shit. Oh yeah, <laughs> but like yeah, they just don't know what's being riffed on, and there's a lot of riffing happening. So... Almost constantly. Yeah crazy movie and also it's beautiful too it is really interesting looking really what a crazy strange movie that d- should not exist <laughs> yeah, i would definitely wild i mean west. it fits with what we're talking about too with wild wild west like neither of these weird western movies should exist Shark, deep, 